Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Spartan. And I'm Pudgy. And we are back with more Game of Thrones today. We are watching season three, episode six. This season so far, especially the last three episodes, I think episode four, five, and six, I think have had no chill. I know a lot of oh. you were pretty hyped about episode four, I think, was pretty excited for that. You know, Danny had made her grand finale there with the Unsullied. Unsullied yeah. But I honestly think five and six are, are pretty much contenders as well. I mean, last episode, I think you cried like three times. <laughs> which everyone's probably used to, but there was so much that went on. We had, there were so many significant big character arcs in one episode. I know. Season three has not disappointed. It has just been full send since the beginning. So, whew. And I feel like it's gone by so fast just because so many big things have happened. Like, I can't believe we're already on episode six. We're almost finished. <laughs> we're officially past the halfway mark of this season. Now, we will be updating our love, like, hate list at the end of the intro. So, keep your eye out for that for anyone who wants to know what changes we've made there. Because there have definitely been changes. The one thing I'm still confused about is... Confused. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> the one thing I'm so confused about is Theon's storyline at the moment. Like, that guy that helped him just took him back to get tortured again. And initially, I, I was thinking that it might have been that, you know, how Theon really broke down and he, be he became vulnerable and he was saying, like, you know, my real father, as in Ned, and, you know, I shouldn't have killed those boys and things like that, expressing regret. Then that guy made the decision to take him back. But I, I don't think that happened nah, because I they think were it was in just that the timing. That yeah. was always the plan. It was always the plan. Yeah, because they were in that little section beforehand. So I was like, no, that can't be it. So now I'm just like completely confused with it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think yeah. we, we've got no leads to go on why that guy's doing what he's doing. I do have this icky feeling that Theon's story arc is going to get yeah. worse, not better, at least at this point, which it's is sad. a shame, especially after his last vulnerability, which at least he's remorseful and sort of similar to Catelyn talking about her yeah. story with Jon Snow. They might not have changed it for the better in time, but have realized and wish they had done better. And even that foresight to be able to see your errors and own them. Yeah. I can sympathize with that reflection and just getting lost in the world of trying to find out who you are and going on the wrong path and only realizing that when it's too late. And so that vulnerability, I embraced yeah. Theon's Almost his version of an apology. For yeah. the and even, you know, he acknowledged Ned Stark as his real father, which is really nice at the end there. To then get, yeah. you know, tricked the way he was. I mean, some of you in the comments will say he deserves it after what he's done. I guess he can go either way, but it's it's still sad. It's still sad to see him go. I know there's goodness deep down in Theon in spite of his mistakes. And, you know, I felt like there was such potential to his character. If this is just the downward slope that he's on, if that keeps getting worse, uh, well, it's going to be pretty tragic. And, you know, in the comments, everyone's kind of saying, like, he killed those two boys. And I'm not taking away from that. I think he he did. But in his admission, his words were very specific. I allowed him to kill them. So I still feel like there's a little bit of that soft spot for him because of that. It wasn't like he went to that next step yes he allowed it and that's not on but you just see where everything is coming from and even the pain like you said of those words my real father because ned embodied what a father should do or should treat him like so yeah and i think in the world of game of thrones is a very large gray area i don't think any character is blameless i mean most people love yeah. drogo and he's pretty ruthless right he's still slaughtering villages, you know, mothers, children, all kinds of stuff. And then even Ned, last episode, we got to understand a lot more surrounding Jamie and the truth yeah. behind why he was a Kingslayer. That touched me. It was a really touching moment. And that highlighted even an honorable man like Ned, how he had his limitations and his biases. And really when Jamie acted in a manner that actually supported the vision or the future that Ned wanted for the kingdom, because it was quote unquote dishonorable, Ned despised him and Jamie knew there was no chance of reaching him. And that was a misjudgment because yeah. the outcome they wanted to save the children, the wives, the, you know, the people of the kingdom was the same. And actually what Jamie did was essential to break a rule that was bounding him yeah. to a horrible man. So that's where there's a lot of gray area in, in, you know, no one's just perfectly ideal in this world and no one's just perfectly ruthless other than maybe Joffrey, right? Joffrey's even then, you can probably really dig deep and find a justification for his, you know, upbringing. But 
Joffrey seems to be pretty ruthless. We've started, but as we learn more about Cersei, Jamie, we see that these characters, yeah, I despise Cersei. And yet I do see a lot seeing her, yeah. the way Tywin raised her and the stresses of a Lannister and just well, the Well, even in the interactions right now, like you yeah, still see that You can out. see where all that manipulation and that determination to continually prove yourself and get to the top is coming from, what's yeah. fueling that. So there's a lot of gray areas. I think me and Pudgy particularly are really good at being able to look at the gray areas, sympathize with that, even if it's not necessarily a perfectly ideal black and white good situation, we can sort of extrapolate the good from that. Yeah, we definitely express our raw thoughts in that moment or all feelings, and then we always see that other side. So by the Lord of Light, the Hound was deemed innocent for the crimes against the butcher's boy. How are you feeling about that? At this point, I can safely say I'm ready to move on from The Butcher's Boy. I don't really hate The Hound anymore. I was impressed with the storyline that they brought attention back to that point. It was very horrifying at the beginning of the show too. Honestly, this far into the show, it's not as shocking either. So I've sort of come accustomed to it. It was a conflict of interest because I didn't want The Hound to die by the time he finally got brought to justice. And to be honest, I'd rather Joffrey pay the price for that. Yeah. So I'm glad The Hound didn't die. Butcher Boy is a, is a memory now. He'll forever be in our hearts, but I'm, re <laughs> I'm ready to move on from The Butcher's Boy. <laughs> Tywin square up to Tyrion and Cersei last episode was Huge. crazy. I mean, I was cheering when it was towards Cersei, Cersei yeah. but very sad and towards concerned Tyrion. towards Tyrion. Same. There are elements, Tywin's a hard one because there are times I love his like strong, his dominant, defiant leadership, you know, to the point kind of character. There's a lot of confidence behind him. He's very wise understands battle very well, understands how to play the Game of Thrones very well, but then he can also be very heartless and cold and ruthless to those closest to him and characters that we often like. Yeah. And that's obviously a conflict of interest. So it's it's sort of a love-hate relationship with Tywin for me at the moment. I love his demeanor in certain scenarios. I don't love him as a person overall. I think that's the best way to put it for me. Yeah, agreed. And I'm But I am dying for him to just... <laughs> annihilate Joffrey. Joffrey, that's what I'm waiting for. put him in for. his place. He's the only one that can at this point, and I'm really waiting to see how they're going to go about that. Well, I mean, Marjorie is doing a really good job at manipulating him, and I think... I feel like that's at risk, though. Now that Tywin's really onto the plan... Yeah, that's true. At risk. How is she going to outsmart Tywin? That's they're, pretty, the thing. they're pretty smart. Her grandmother's pretty smart, so, yeah. you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, it's almost like Ned was just leadership in a way and he played the game of thrones through honor the lannisters in particular tywin they have that manipulation but they also have that honorable side in terms of like the army and the way they do th i wouldn't say everything they do is honorable and then the tyrells are just pure manipulation like behind the scenes tactical political it's not so much We've got a whole army behind us. It's we are going to play to our strengths and everyone in unison is going to get that goal together no matter what, you know, what we need to do to get it. Yeah, I think what you're meaning by the Lannisters being honourable is that, well, not really the Lannisters, Tywin in particular Tywin. understands yeah. those who help him, he will look after them. So he has that honourable side, but he's also, you know, it's not very honourable because he's no. also, yeah. it's very manipulative really, but... Yeah. If those who serve, who and he sees, he understands someone has value, yeah. he's not as brash as Cersei and Joffrey are to just sort of move on for their own sakes yeah. and jeopardize a, you know, a larger picture. He has that bigger vision, that bigger picture sort of vision towards what needs to be done. Yeah. Another big thing that I love last episode, it seemed to be the episode of the Lannisters, just big things happening in the in the royal family, really. Yeah. Jamie's vulnerability, like it, our hearts, when he was having some sort of, like he was having, I don't know, like a PTSD attack or something. Like, remember he started like fainting when he was telling his story and then oh. he started like, and then, then Brienne went to rescue him and called for help. And when she said, you know, it's the Kingslayer and needs help. And he goes, my name's Jamie, you know, and oh. it was just like the, the perfect time to add that line after his vulnerability, telling the truth behind what happened and what he's been feeling and seeing. That honestly, like I felt that in my heart. I'm, I'm crying right now. Oh, I really, I really felt for Jamie and it gave me a lot more respect for him there. Yeah, I don't know. Was he just weak because you know he's not being fed properly? He's not like you know the he pain like from a his panic hands. attack or some sort. Maybe, maybe. I don't know if it was something more like a, a stroke yeah. or something, but yeah. 
I'm just absolutely loving the position Robbie's in. Like he was cool last episode. He yeah, had, he had presence. He, the presence was amazing, and he's really. You can see he's struggling between doing what's right morally, but then also being a leader. And I'm really enjoying that journey because at the moment, Talissa and Catelyn are his advisors in a way. And we've got Blackfish there, so I feel a little bit safer with that. But And Talissa and Catelyn not being warriors yeah. themselves, I don't think have the knowledge to really advise on war. Yes, they can yeah. give you know advice that might have its role sometimes, but at the end of the day, you do need people who are in the thick of it, have yeah. experience in the front lines of war, to be able to then give good advice, yeah. like you know, Danny has two seasoned warriors and people who understand military strategy, understand the end goal over short-term emotional, yeah. you know, like Catelyn and Carrie away, away with her kids. So I think yeah, it's a good point that he does need advisors. Uh, he, you know, Theon betrayed him. He's only got his wife yeah. and his mother. He, the, the guy's really doing it alone. One of his close allies betrayed him too. Yeah. Like. But he did say that now he's considering his other marriage again. So he's on the way to fray. I'm well, curious to see what that means. Is it going to be double marriage? I well, can't imagine he him breaking up with Talisa. He didn't necessarily say marriage. He's just said that he's going there to. Well, it's not marriage. It's going to be trouble. I know. I know. He may have an alternative promise. We will see. Because oath breaking hard. is not taken lightly in this world. Maybe they'll offer a child. Like if he has a child, I don't know. I don't know if Rob would want to do that. He hated it. Why would he want to do that? Yeah. Okay, so the infamous love, like, hate list. Are you ready? Just a reminder, we don't discuss this beforehand, so we don't know what each of us has picked. Yeah. Big season. I'm going to say right off the bat that I have a few changes and ones that are going to have people a little bit... Well, you wait, wait and see. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not, like, fully convinced in my list. Like, I just feel like... You never are, yeah. dude. You never are. Okay. <laughs> Most indecisive person ever. The girlfriend stereotype definitely applies to this one. Oh, with characters. With everything. All right, let's go. Okay, so my love list hasn't really changed. It's Rob, King of the North, Arya, and Tyrion. So no one changed? No. Fair enough. Well, okay, well, boring. <laughs> but don't worry, your boy is not disappoint. I'm a loyal person. You want controversy? I'm your guy. <laughs> to be fair, my I actually love, like, my love list has actually changed too much. I just noticed. Rob Stark is still there and Tyrion's still there. Okay. However, some of you are going to love this. Some of you are going to hate this. Stannis, this season, has not been living up to his name. Okay. He hasn't done anything epic. I haven't loved the way he's handled the whole Davos situation. And he just hasn't, you know, he's a bit of a broken man. So I'll give him time, but he's had to be taken off the love list because right now he's just not living up to what I'd hoped for him. And I've had to replace him with Tywin. Now, this is going to be very... He was on your hate list. I know, but he was on my hate list because he because he caused Stannis to lose the war, right? You well, for hate to love? It's circumstantial love. I can imagine him coming <laughs> off eventually as well. But I am loving... I don't think he's a, he's a, he's a, the nicest guy on the street, right? But I am loving his characterization. He's cutthroat. Yeah. He's to the point. He's direct. He knows what he wants and how to get it. What Stannis was initially. Yes, but even even more. Like, he's actually doing yeah. it. He's not being, Stannis being, is still being manipulated by desperate circumstances. He's still being driven by feelings of things not being fair and has Melisandre in his ear. Whereas I am respecting that Tywin is just his own man. He's a leader. He makes his own decisions. He doesn't get emotionally manipulated by others. And he's, he's the only one that squared up Cersei and about to square up Joffrey. And I've just liked the characterization of like almost like a military general coming to play. So that's why he's on my love list for now. All right. So my like list is, which this one or I always struggle with because I feel like there's some other people that I would like to add, but. Oh. Dude, you can't. When you write it down, you just say it. You always get to this point and then you start <laughs> overthinking it and trying to change Can it. Can I have four? No. <laughs> Fine. Okay, so Danny is on my like list. Yeah, no surprise. Jamie is on my like list. And what are you thinking about? It's meant to, it's meant to be written down. <laughs> Because I'm thinking I'm going to change this one. Do new rules going to be you've got 10 seconds to say all three names, and then if they're not in, you lose a spot. <laughs> okay, we can't be coming here and then just thinking about changing it. It's between Talissa and Elena, 
But yeah, so both crap characters. Wait, <laughs> is Elena the grandmother? Yeah, no, she's a good character. I'll, I'll Elena every day of the week. Yeah, maybe I'll do Elena because Talisa hasn't really done much lately. So Elena. All right, my like list. I have replaced the Hound for now with Davos because I just respected yeah. Davos so much. He was such an honourable, genuinely good guy in the last few episodes, and I really respected his loyalty, and I feel like he's not getting treated as good as he should be. So Davos is up there. Bronn's being replaced with Jamie. Really Bronn, liked Jamie the last few episodes. He's grown on me, especially after the last one. So Jamie's making his way there. The last one's tough. I'm undecided between replacing Varys with the Hound or leaving Varys there. So it's sort of a half-half situation where I'm that one I've sort of left undecided. No, no. Decide. You want to give me shit before. <laughs> Decide. At the moment, I'm probably going to go with Varys then because yeah. Varys has just been consistent. The Hound, I still respect the guy. I just want to see a bit more from him this season. Okay. Hate list is pretty easy. I mean, there's always one that I... Change, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Percy Joffrey for both of us. That's the given. No, actually. Really? Yeah. Cersei got off there. <laughs> Cersei's off oh, there. Oh, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> so, Joffrey, Stannis, and Littlefinger. Stannis went on your hate list. I'm really not liking... The way he treated that boss and stuff. Yeah. And, I mean, I found out he's got, like, a little girl who's got like, that grayscale kind of thing, but... She's a little girl. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not liking it. And just the way he's been treating Davos and everyone around him, yeah, it's not for me. Fair enough. Mine is Joffrey Cersei, of course. And I have replaced Tywin with Littlefinger again because okay. he betrayed Sansa yeah. and it kind of irritated me again, just reminding me how he's just, you can't trust yeah. anything that that guy does. He's always somehow using somebody. So he's back on the list. Yeah. Honorable mentions. Joa. Joa Mormont. Sad death. He deserved better, but so does yeah. a lot of characters. But he will be missed. He will be very and missed. And along with Joa, it hasn't really been confirmed if these ones are dead, but I feel like they might be. So Piper, Dolores, and Gren, which are the ones that were with John and Sammy. So if they are, they are definitely on my honourable mentions. Yeah, I don't know if they made it. They were, yeah, they were significant enough. And the Lannister boys. That was sad. That broke me. Dude, that they're, not on, on, they're not honorable mentions. 100% it is. Don't even, I don't even know their names. Like, they're just random kids. I mean, no, it was a I sad forgot, scene. I forgot their names, but they deserve to be it on honorable mentions. It was a sad scene, mentions. but you can't be honorable mentions if you haven't proved yourself a legend. You're going to have to have done legendary things. It's no. honorable mention, right? Honorable. These guys, no yeah, one knew them. Yeah, that, that was. You're abusing your not No, following. I'm not. They took it like men. As little boys, they just stayed there. They were hostages and oh, they broke my heart. They thought they were coming as a rescue mission. No, they're on my honourable oh, mentions. Well, list. we'll agree and disagree for the sake of this intro not being longer than it's already going to be. And Corin Harpand, he literally sacrificed himself for the greater good. That was for an interesting John. sacrifice. Very interesting the way he went about that, yeah. I mean, I feel like he would have been tortured otherwise. So it was for himself as much as it was for John, but you know, that's still a hard decision to make. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. If you are interested in supporting us over on Patreon, check out the link in our description. We do have early access to upcoming reactions as well as uncut reactions. Those of you over on YouTube, if you enjoyed today's reaction, remember to leave a like, hit that subscribe button with notification bells on so you know when we upload next and let us know in the comments down below what you thought of today's episode. Okay, let's do it. So this episode is called The Climb. And you know what song, like, goes into my head straight away? Yeah, I know that song. I don't like that song. There's always going to be another. Yeah. To that one. <laughs> Isn't that um, Miley Cyrus? Miley Cyrus. Yeah, I don't like that song. <laughs> but the more wood, the bigger the fire. Oh, Sammy. Take off that big lock. <laughs> She's definitely more adept at survival than he is. Oh, yeah. You know you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> he just takes it. He's like, oh, you're better than me. It's fine. She's so excited with her. Do you think? No. No, no, no. Not very well. <laughs> Sing me a song. Sing us a song, Sammy. All right. He'll do anything for He'll her. He'll do anything she asks, yeah. Man sipping hardcore. Oh. <clears throat> The mother. 
Never give the gift of life and watches over every wife. Her gentle smile ends all strife. That doesn't look like a good scene. It's too quiet. Don't tell me there are white walkers in the forest, man. That's not how you skin a rabbit. I know how to skin a rabbit. Not by the looks of it. <laughs> They're like competing. You learn how to use your fists, though. Oh, you could have poked <laughs> the rabbits to death. I had someone else in mind. Well, someone else is right here. <laughs> You're both very good at skinning rabbits. <laughs> You've been nasty to her every day. Of course she's nasty back. Me? It's my fault. First time I met her, she put a knife to my throat. First time I met True. you, you held a knife at me. True. <laughs> Brad, speaking facts. I want you both to make peace. Well done. A little later in him yet. Little man. Little Ned's coming out. Your way of skinning rabbits is quicker than mine. I said so, didn't I? Oh, shut. <laughs> <laughs> She's not good at this. <laughs> oh, what the hell? What's happening? Is he having like a seizure? I'm right here with you. I'm guessing it's not the first time because she knows what to, what to do. Oh, poor guy. Shit. He's having one now. Damn. Oh, yeah, it's like a seizure. I hope that doesn't happen to Bran. I feel like he might. Just to throw another spanner in the works. What did he see? I saw Jon Snow. You saw him? Oh, no. At Castle Black? Don't be bad. He was on the wrong side of the wall. Surrounded by enemies. We know that so far. I know, but... I think he he's just didn't finish what happened. He's saying their plan towards the wall is futile at the moment. Here, sit down. Brought a pair for you. They're too big for you, but they're good. So they're gonna scale the wall, dude. Holy crap. They're too big for him. Keep that in mind. I hope that doesn't mean something bad. Well, he didn't do that thing you do with your tongue. <laughs> she loved the tongue. Well, I'm Jon Snow. I've killed <laughs> dead men and Corrin Afan, but I'm scared of naked girls. Did I see you she mocked him so much. You were trembling like a leaf. Only in the beginning. <laughs> Don't worry. Your secret's safe with me. Hope so. so. She knows his game plan. You didn't stop being a crow the day you walked into Mance Raider's tent. Oh, you're not fooling her, John. But she's okay with it. You're going to be loyal to your woman. I hope she's sincere. I hope she is. The Night's Watch don't care if you live or die. Man's way they don't care if I live or die. He better not disappoint her, dude. <laughs> she's she's gonna sell him out straight away. I don't know, that line made me feel like it was sincere. That matters to me and you. He seems a bit unsure about it all. Because I'll cut your pretty cock <laughs> right off and wear it round me neck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> she's claimed him as her meat. <laughs> and if you fall, don't scream. You don't want that to be the last thing she remembers. Oh my oh. god. How could oh, you not man. scream? I was caught between feeling like a threat and loyalty was in her, what she was saying. So Arya. Oh, she's naming each of them as well. You're not as good as you think you are. Well, definitely not as good as this guy. Will he be her next teacher? Balls. I hit him right where I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Your muscles tense up when you hold. Pull the string yeah. up to the center of your chin and release. Nice. It's going to be the new Serio. Never aim. Your eye knows when it wants the adder to go. Trust your eye. Mm, don't overthink it. Because he's the good archer that shot it in the sky. Yeah. Almost like a Serio in terms of his advice. Oh. Oh, Melisandre. So you were right, I think, if it is her. Yeah, yeah I was right. <laughs> good call. Wow. I'm good. Walk to Segli aot gai mo laxir teptas. Roberti dari zihi ne kepti se exiot on your gemagon. Oh wow, that was their mission. Okay. Kept eyeing Arya off. The plot thickens. I don't see many ladies these days. Lucky for the ladies. <laughs> I know, look at him. Jeez, he's been through it. Damn. She's not afraid of anything. 
How many times has the Lord brought him back? Six. Even she's astonished. Wonder what the cost is to all that though. I think we're about to find out. By the time I came to Westeros, I didn't believe in our Lord. I mean, it is kind of unbelievable. Until the mountain drove a through this one's heart. Wow. So that's the mountain killed him. And I said the old words. Not because I believed in them, but he was my friend. Yeah. Damn. Okay, that's a nice little backstory. And for the first time in my life, the Lord replied. And I knew the truth. Our God is the one true God. Of course you're going to believe after that. Yep. You've been to the other side. There is no other side. Oh, damn. He sent you to us for a reason. Yeah, what is that reason? You have someone he needs. Aria. Tell me it's Arya. Or Gendry. She's very different around them than she's with Stannis. She's more genuine and natural, it feels like. I didn't like that woman. <laughs> me neither, Arya. I trust Arya's intuition as well. Please not, Gendry. What are you doing? Because he has Baratheon blood. He wants to be one of you! He wants to join the Brotherhood! Stop them! We serve the Lord of Light. And the Lord of Light needs this boy. Oh my god. No way, they better not kill him. You're not doing this for your god. Oh, and the gold compensation. I get it, but... She told me I could be one of you. Yeah. Where's the loyalty? Their loyalty is to the Lord of Light. You will make kings rise and fall. What? Gendry? Okay, I hope they don't kill him, though. I wonder what he's... The grand's plan is. Melisandre's on her list now. I see a darkness in you, and in that darkness, eyes staring back at me. Brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. Eyes you'll shut forever. All the people she kills. <laughs> oh no. That's interesting. Oh yes. Oh, Arya's gonna be a beast. Oh, Gendry. I hope he ends up alright too. I like him. Damn, dude. What a wall. Screw that. How the hell are you going to climb that? Oh my god. Look at them. They're like little ants. Someone's going to fall for sure. Look how much harder work it is. It'd be exhausting, let alone the risks and the slippery slopes. It's freezing. Holy Tell shit. Tell me she falls. Are they connected to each other using the same rope? I wouldn't think so. That wouldn't be smart. Don't Holy look down, brother. Shit. Don't look down. I think they are. They're connected. Shit. Oh, take this seriously. God damn. Okay, so those four connected. Whoa. Whoa. Water. What's this guy's name? He's going on my hate list. <laughs> oh, definite Jeez, hate list. Dude, this guy is sadistic. Who are you? Which body part do you need the least? Oh no, not one of these sick scenes. Oh, Theon. I hope it's not like a brother of his or cousin or something. I'm not gonna like this scene. You've been wondering why you're here. Yeah, tell us please. If you guess right, I'll tell you. If I win, he'll let me go. Please guess right, Theon. I wouldn't trust him. Come on, Theon. Put your big boy pants on. Deepwood Mott. <laughs> Terrible guess. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. What the hell is happening to you? Is that correct? Okay. 
Torren casts up. He's dead. Strangled by the Kingslayer. He was your brother. Oh, wow. Oh, the brother of the cousin that Jamie strangled. But why is Theon copying it? You win. Really? That's why? Must oh be more to it. Oh god. This guy looks like he enjoys it. You forgot to ask if I'm a liar. <gasps> oh my god, dude. I'm afraid I am. Oh my god, I... Oh. Everything I told you is a lie. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, that's what I said. I win. Oh, I don't like you at all. That guy is a sicko. That w that. <sighs> wow, that's an intense scene. Dude. I knew it. I was like, oh, he just seems like he's enjoying it too much. I just, I need a moment because. <sighs> wow, Theon has gotten himself in some deep shit, dude. I don't know what this guy's. So we didn't even know if that was true then because he's saying he lied. So yeah. obviously, I don't, we still don't know anything about this guy. All I know is he seems even more. Well, he seems equal to Joffrey, to be honest, in terms of, like, the sadisticness. Just yeah. Just enjoys cruelty for the sake of enjoying it. Look, we don't know much about him yet, but I feel like he's honestly worse than Joffrey at this point. I don't know. This is too much. Wow. I feel like Joffrey has some kind of limit. I hope I don't regret saying that, but this guy's, like, next level. Our father requires Lord Edmure to wed one of his daughters. Oh, no. Oh, my God. So they don't care about Rob getting married now, but they want to make sure a marriage happens. Happy with that. It's going to be a bit unfair for Rob to demand someone else to do what he didn't. Yeah, that's true. But I don't mind if he gets married to them. <laughs> Better than Rob. <laughs> you the laws of gods and men are very clear. No man can compel another man to marry. The laws of my fist are about to compel your teeth. <laughs> when I say no, you will come back. And offer me a daughter of my choosing. You're willing to okay, risk our so smart. freedom and our lives for a chance at a prettier wife. I have a war to fight. Hey, hang on. You can't call shit here. You said you wanted to make amends for the stone mill. You recall that heroic engagement? <laughs> He's such a piss take. I don't agree with Rob here making demands though. Yeah, I don't particularly agree with Rob, but I'm happier with the decision. You're paying for my sins, Uncle. At least he owns it. It's not fair or right. Okay. I'll remember it. Okay. I I'm okay with that. I'm satisfied with that. At least he pays the dues, yeah, okay. My lady, may our journey continue without further incident. Oh, sure, oh. we are going with you. Oh, no. What's Jamie going to do? Because I think he does care for her. My grandson is the pride of High Garden, the most desirable bachelor in all. <laughs> this discussion is going to be great. The most beautiful woman in all seven kingdoms, and the mother of the king. Old. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great discussion, dude. These two are hilarious. The only thing that might turn it are details of your grandson's nocturnal activities. Do you deny them? Oh, not at all. Oh. A sword swallower through and through. A sword swallower. Did you grow up with boy cousins, Lord Tywin? Put Tywin in his place? Never. No. Not once. Not in any way. No way. <laughs> Perhaps High Garden has a high tolerance for unnatural behavior. <laughs> <laughs> True, we don't tie ourselves in knots over a discreet bit of buggery, but brothers and sisters. Oh. Does he even know? Oh, God. Damn, well played. This is a great discussion. If you refuse to marry Loras to Cersei, I will <gasps> name him to the king's guard. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no, Tywin. Damn, he played that well. Have something up your sleeve, please. It's a rare enough thing. 
A man who lives up to his reputation. Oh, okay. I wanted to see what that means now. That was the interaction that is just brilliant. Yeah. Was, we didn't know how, actually how badly we needed that. Yeah. Like, honestly, that is a whole different demeanor I've seen to Olena. You can tell she knew Tywin is of an equal, if not better, stature in terms of being able to play the game. Yeah. Whereas everyone else, she's sort of, you know, Varys, little thing, doesn't matter who, she's played them down condescendingly. She knew her place here, and it was a very toe-to-toe -to -toe battle. I respected that dialogue. Yeah, but she wasn't intimidated, and the difference is the shortcoming, say, of Loras or... Cersei, right? For Lena, that's not a thing, like a big deal. So that's her strength in that. Whereas Tywin despises those rumors. He's doing everything. I mean, Lena's and yeah, word. he came out on top. So no, what do you mean? She snapped you, it in half. You didn't get that reference. The point of that was she concedes. It's like, don't write up the letter because he's going to write up the letter. I'll make him Kingsguard, and she's saying, okay, like oh, right. you can live up to, to your reputation. Oh, I just feel like she has something up her sleeve, though. I don't know, but the the way I interpreted that was that yeah. people were saying, okay, don't write the letter. You live up to your name. Yeah. I just thought there was going to be something more, but we're just not seeing it right now. I don't know. Look, she's not easily beaten. I don't think yeah. she's done, but that's what I concluded from that scene. Yeah. Okay. He looks like that guy from Monsters, Inc. <laughs> Abominable snowman. This is not going to be good. No. Holy shit. Wow. Because her and John are on the same line. No. All four of them are. Oh my god. No. At least he's a good leader. The second guy's a traitor. Oh my god, this guy. Come on, John. Oh, yes. <gasps> John has her, though. She's on Yeah, they're on the same line. But that would have hurt. He caught her. Far out, man. Take my hand! Oh, Jesus. I that can't breathe. Intense. Oh, that guy's gonna cop it. Damn. Wow. Oh. What do they do now? They just keep going. What else can you do? Shit. I'm very happy. Uh, yes. I am as well. Playing his part. Poor Sansa. She's oh. forever led down the wrong path. I've dreamed of a large wedding since I was quite young. The guests, the food, the tournaments. Just not with Sansa or any other girl. Uh, and the bride, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been to Highgarden, my lady? No, I'd never left Winterfell before I came to King's Landing. I can't wait to see it. Damn, she probably never will. It's terrible, isn't it? The most terrible place there is. And they're both gonna get bound to it. Oh no. They have no idea. Suppose there's anything we can do about this? You can have them both killed. Oh, of course you go straight to that member of your family who's actively contributed to that family's survival. Yeah, or not that's you, true. Father, or anyone else wants to admit it. I do admit it. The survival of King's Landing, literally. Stannis would have sacked the city before father got here. Our heads would still be rotting on the city gate. Trying to have me killed is an odd way of saying thank you. She doesn't deny it. I know. Did you? Or did you not order Sir Mandon to kill me during the Battle of the Blackwater? Let's hear it. She's so quiet. That was almost a smirk. He wants me dead, but his stupidity? 
He could have had me poisoned and no one would have known. He's saying it was Joffrey. Okay. Yeah. Orders the king's guard to murder the hand of the king in full view of his own army. The boy's an idiot. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Once Jamie gets back, Sir Loras may come down with a terrible case of sword through bowels. <laughs> <laughs> When do we think that's going to be? He's out there somewhere. I don't think he wants your love. My poor Tyrion. Loris likes green and gold brocade. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Oh, Sans is going to be so cut, dude. It sounds a lot Tyrion to see you. Should I? Oh, here we go. Oh, and Shay's there as well. I need to speak with you, Lady Sansa. Of course. Alone, if I may. Why do you need to speak to her alone, Shay? <laughs> <laughs> he knows. He knows. Damn, it's going to be hard. And it's only afterwards, when it's too late, that we realise we wished we'd heard it under entirely different circumstances. Yep, listen to Tyrion. Come on, Shay, trust him. Oh, no, this is going to be shit. Poor guy. This is awkward. Yep. Damn. He's always staring at the throne. I love these two. There aren't a thousand blades. There aren't even two hundred. I've counted. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> but your confidant, the one who fed you information about my plans. Oh no. The one you swore to protect. You didn't bring her any enjoyment, and she didn't bring me any enjoyment. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, shit, Roz. Varys is not going to be happy about this because he is true to his word. But what do we have left once we abandon the lie? Chaos. A gaping pit waiting to swallow us all. Interesting, I like that. Chaos is a ladder. Oh my god, this wow. guy is crazy. Never get to try again. The fall breaks them. <gasps> oh my god, dude. Holy crap. Wow. I feel like Joffrey has some kind of limit. I hope I don't regret saying that. They're given a chance to climb, but they refuse. Wow. They cling to the realm, or the gods, or love, illusions. Jesus. Only the ladder is real. My heart's like clenched up. Time is all there is. Well, why is Sansa crying? What happened? Wow, because she got the news about Tyrion. Yeah, and but... the ship was sailing away, so she's not going to leave King's Landing. So she knows she's not leaving his landing, but holy cow, Roz, what was that? I knew someone who would, was going to mess with, like, I knew it was going to be something screwed up, and I, I knew it was going to be brutal, but I didn't expect to see it then and there like that from Joffrey. That was, that was too much. Wow. And, and with the, I can't speak. Wow, and she really trusted Varys, really thought he could protect him, and to be fair, he tried to his best. He got outplayed. Littlefinger outplayed him. Holy crap. But what? Littlefinger... What did Littlefinger do? Like, tell Joffrey to do it? That doesn't no, make No, Joffrey sense. had a sick fetish. He knew yeah. that. Joffrey enjoys it. You saw what he did to the other girls. He enjoys cruelty. And he so found he... the right customer. Probably spun a bit of a lie there, too, that she was not loyal to the throne, whatever, and he perfectly wanted to have his way with. But holy crap. Imagine being hung there, and then him just firing arrows at her for sport. Oh my Jesus, god. Jesus, man. That. Look, I'm so happy we did not see that scene because that I, I'm ruthless. broken now. That would have been next level. If that scene was done like slowly, slowly, that would have been agonizing to watch. Oh, I wouldn't be able to watch it. I was turning away when Theon's little finger was getting cut. Wow. <sighs> oh my god. Everything is literally chaotic right now. It is. Everything's just turned on its head. What the hell? Did they make it to the top? Oh, I want to hear snow now. This will be interesting. This guy knows he's screwed. Watch your back, mate. 
So only four of them made it up in the end. Wow, solid view. I know. She's crying. Probably the first time she's seen such beauty after a hard life. Probably thinking the gods that she's bloody alive. What happens now though? This is the interesting part. It's the other side of the wall. Look at John's face from when the rock hit him. Oh, those oaths definitely aren't coming back. I do like them together. And I think now it's confirmed that she's quite sincere. What a scene. There's no way the episode ends on a good note. It never ends on a good note. I know, what the hell? Or at least not on a peaceful note, I should say. Wow, that's awesome. I was like The Witcher. It reminds me of The Witcher 3. It was nice to get a bit of a sincere conversation with Cersei and Tyrion. I feel I like- I enjoyed that too. Yeah, I feel like it was purely one of the only times we've actually had a conversation where they're on similar wavelengths and in the end she doesn't like push him down or like smirk because she's got one up on him or something. She wasn't even really trying to belittle him in that conversation. Yeah. They're literally in the same position right now. But wow, that I have to go back to the scene with Rose because damn, yeah. whenever you think you can lower your guard a bit, this show just smacks you in the chest. Like I genuinely, that was just so it was disturbing to be honest. Just Joffrey, I know how he's like. It almost would have been less disturbing if it was some random guy we didn't know. And I thought that he just sold her to some weirdo and he had his way with her and probably you know like defiled her. I knew it was going to be something like creepy, but I didn't think like it being Joffrey and we almost know how that would have gone down because we've seen how. He yeah. can be in that situation. Like nothing was really left to the imagination. Yeah. So as soon as you see that, you're like, oh my God, you know how just disgusting it would have been. And in the end, Roz, she wasn't a bad character. She was just trying to find her way in life. She was dealt pretty average cards as a poor person. And she was trying to just make a living. And then you got some, you know, all these power hungry, just maniacs. And she became a victim of getting involved in that battle. Well, she lit do you remember her when she left Winterfell? Like she was so optimistic for a better life. Oh, like, damn. oh my God. And then to end in that way is so tragic. Looking back now, Littlefinger's warning was a lot of foreshadowing. Wow. He, my, my chest still actually feels tight. Yeah. That. that was like just, ugh. His voice over that scene as well, the way he was speaking with, su with such malice, like it was just disgusting. Like little thing, I'm glad he he made it to my hate list. Cause, and I'm glad it's on my hate list too. Yeah, because if he didn't, he would be now. That, yeah, I'm not liking him at all. Whereas you could see Varys was concerned. Oh. Varys doesn't like cruelty for the sake of it. Yeah. He really seems to be by far the most sincere guy on the council. He doesn't enjoy cruelty needlessly. He does seem to at least care for the large well-being of the role. Yeah. And he does care for people who he thinks like, you know, Roz and Sansa and people who he genuinely think have done wrong by, to the best of his abilities, he's not going to play heroic Ned Stark where he yeah. thinks he's not going to, he's not naive like that, but he will try and assist where he can. But damn, he well, lost you know, this one. You know what's interesting about Varys is, yes, a, he can see that a lot of the things that are put in place are full of shit, right? They were talking about, like, the lie and things like that. But not just that. Like, there are a lot of things in this world where things just don't make sense, but they work for the civility of everything. And although he sees it, he respects it because he knows what's on the other side. He knows literally the chaos that can just spread if those things aren't put in place. Yeah, he understands there are certain stories and lies yeah. in place to keep stability and order yeah. in a realm and a, and a time when people can't, can only handle so much truth. Yeah. And they, in fact, the structures and the order of things depend on the certain lies they've been built upon, you know? And yeah, yeah well, it, it was, I love that discussion between Littlefinger and Varys. It was great analysis. Yeah. And they all, all almost had their own subtle differences in the way they interpret necessary. You know, one was that chaos is a pit to fall into Varys, which very much reflects his character. Yeah. And then Littlefinger's was, Chaos is allowed to climb, which very much shows how he feeds off that chaos to try yeah. and climb to the top. Whereas Varys is actually trying to avoid 
the pit of chaos. So that's the, you know, underpins the different ways their characters go about all knowledge that they have. Oh, and just that conversation was different. Like at the start, there was some witty banter, but it got serious real quick. That was like one of their first, if I'm not mistaken, like real serious convos where it just did not end well. Yeah, well, I understand why Varys fears Littlefinger. I honestly think Littlefinger at the moment seems to even be a step above Varys. He's even oh, yeah. a, little, a little bit more menacing than Varys is. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Loved the discussion between Tywin and Elena. That was great. I won't hum on about it or talked about it, but just that was really cool to see. We interpret it a bit differently. We'll see how it plays out, but yeah. I'm pretty confident in my analysis at this point. <laughs> she's such a great character and she's not frightened by fall of reputation or a taint in anything. And yeah, I just see her as like really strong. She knows what she's there for. She knows her strengths and she knows her weaknesses and she plays them well. And even in defeat, she doesn't buckle, which I really, really like. Yeah, she's a strong character. She knows how to, even if she's going to lose, yeah. she's going to do it strong. And she's what Cersei thinks she is. Mm. But Cersei really isn't at near that level. And Tywin sort of acknowledged that last episode. You're not nearly as smart as you think you are. Honestly, I, I know, like, I like the Sarks. I know I like Danny the Targaryen. But I am liking the Tyrells. I am liking them. Dude, you guys don't understand what, what I put up with, right? <laughs> We've ordered the t-shirts for our houses. We'll show you guys photos. They'll be on our Instagram soon, so check that out. Your boy, plain and simple, Starks. This you is Baratheon this, and then you Yeah, but I was able to... Right? No, I always liked Starks. Baratheon was my second. But yeah. I knew how to choose my main house. <laughs> she can't decide, so she goes, gets a Targaryen and a Stark t-shirt. And now you kind of decide if they're your two main because you're going to like the Tyrells as well. No, I haven't decided. Like, so far, what I'm like, I'm liking what I'm seeing oh, from no, them. I'm, I'm allowed saying, to. Oh, no, no, I'm just saying there's no loyalty. There is. I haven't abandoned anyone. Oh, my God. Oh, the Tyrells have escalated this season. I'll, yeah. I'll give them that. They've been a lot more interesting. And they're probably the first major house to have real powerful women. At the moment, they're probably the women I'm liking the most. You know, a lot of the other women, like Talisa and stuff, they were witty and funny, but they didn't amount to much for me personally. Yeah. I didn't like Cersei and Catelyn. I didn't like the way she treated Jon and she was sort of wasn't influential enough for me to go, she's a top tier. Whereas yeah. Olena and Marjorie, I genuinely really am intrigued. I like what they offer the show, yeah. the presence. They go head to head with some of the strong characters that are around that we've gotten to know earlier on. So it's interesting and I respect their dynamic and I'm intrigued to see their character development as well. Sam, so Rob now, his uncle is going to marry one of the Frey girls. Well, it's going to strengthen his army. Yeah. So, and it's at no real cost to Rob at this stage. Yeah, but we weren't really agreeing with it because it was a double standard. Like, he, he was kind of saying, like, you know, I've got a war to win and things like that. But the acknowledgement at the end of, you know, you're doing me a massive favor, I am in debt to you, like... Is what differentiated him from a lot of... Yeah. The, a lot of the people we don't like in King's Landing. Yeah. And you know that Rob, well, I don't particularly, I'm not going to say that you know because. Well, we know he he'll did, follow through. Yeah. Well, you think that he will follow through. He didn't follow through with his word with uh, Walter Frey. So. Yeah, but to be fair, that was never really his word. He was yeah. pushed into a corner by his mother and had no choice. Like, that was never his. No, he had a choice. He had a choice. He made the choice. Yeah. I mean, it's like holding you off a cliff edge with one arm and saying, you know, do you want me to hold you or let go? Well, you're going to pick one, aren't you? Like, he was basically much off a cliff with his army. And yeah. Catelyn said, I'm holding you by your hand, but the only way is if you is if you let me pull you up. So what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to fall off. <laughs> like, if you call that a choice, a choice. It's back into a corner with one stupid option and one only viable option. So anyway, I'm really liking the dynamic as well between Brienne and Jamie. Yeah. Their friendship's really grown. Their respect for each other has grown. And Jamie seems to sincerely care about her. Which is yeah. pretty cool. I really hope he throws Cersei in the trash after all of this, once they reunite, if they get to. Yeah, that and would be weird to see them again together. Yeah, I'm just not for it. Like, I feel like he's outgrown her. Yeah, for sure. Where she's still pining over him. Yeah, no shit. You've been through absolutely nothing. You've sat there while there's a war outside, which I don't expect her to fight. But, you know, she's just sitting there all high and mighty. And Ruining stuff. everyone else's lives. Yeah. 
And then I feel sorry for our boy Theon. Like that that scene is that guy's sadistic. That's probably almost as creepy as Joffrey scene with uh, with Roz. Yeah, isn't it funny? I said that that guy's probably worse than Joffrey, but I think they're on par. Yeah, that's what I was saying. They're definitely on par. You can't forget how weird Joffrey is, but I uh, still, yeah, wow. I don't know what that's about. We'll find out eventually, but that's that's definitely the darker elements of Game of Thrones really come into play. This season's definitely take, gone darker as well as yeah. it's gone. A lot of areas have improved and it's definitely really explored a bit more of that sadistic side to the Game of Thrones. Well, a smaller point, I guess, is Bran and his storyline and the Reed family. I mean, anyway, I can't remember his name, but the Reed boy was almost having a seizure of like the with these visions and it was too much to control. And I really hope that's not foreshadowing Bran's fate with these visions. I hope he can really get them under control because I had so much faith in this Reed boy. Like he's like, I'm going to help you, like, you know, control them. Like I can help you with it, but he can't control it everything himself. Has toll. Well, you can control it, but everything has his toll. There's, yeah. There's a degree of things you just can't control. Yeah. So I was right last episode that Melisandre did meet the brotherhood, brotherhood banners, yeah. yeah but we didn't expect at all that that would take Gendry although it made sense I picked up on the fact that the Baratheon blood which she mentioned to Stannis you're not the only one of the blood so there's obviously yeah. a plan there I don't think they're gonna well I thought because we met the daughter I thought that was gonna be like we oh, met nah. Stannis but yeah nah, nah, nah. so hopefully she's not planning on killing him I'm hoping that there's more to it I'm hoping there's not a, just a sacrifice she did say he would be the one to decide kings or Make them rise Make and fall. Make kings rise and fall, but how that's going to happen, I don't know. So that will be interesting. Yeah, Paul Gendry. I mean, last episode, we literally had a conversation talking about family between Arya and- He finally and chose his own family and then- They betrayed him, just like everyone else did. Yeah, Brotherhood of Banners, definitely, I get it, the practicalities of what it takes to run them, but their loyalty and being able to trust their word was compromised a little bit this episode. I'm a little bit less faithful in- taking what they say at face value. Well, their loyalty is to their the God. God, not the men. Yeah, and whatever message they think it sends, they'll go with it, be it yeah. right or wrong. Yeah. But that was a cool scene where Melisandre said, you know, I see darkness in your eyes to Arya and mentioned all the coloured eye. Oh, that was a sick scene. I look forward to seeing Arya's future. I feel like yeah. I'm really going to enjoy that. Yeah. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed our reaction to this episode. If you did, give the video a like and hit the subscribe button. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you guys on the next reaction. See you guys.